Hi, my name's John, back with another video for Copper Wi-Fi. Today we're going to be looking at the Maru 1550 controller. And right now we're on 6142 on the code. We're going to upgrade that to, to 80. We're going to completely bypass 7. I guess I missed that one. So first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go to uh, Fortinet support. Uh, remember, Maru was purchased by Fortinet. So all the firmware and everything is on their, on their support site now. So we're going to log in and gonna look specifically for the new firmware. It's under the download section and then firmware images. And we need to sort by the different types of devices that Fortinet has. We'll select the Maru products, go to download, and we're looking for SD. That stands for System, system Director. And we're looking for the uh, SR1-2 firmware. Select your controller and you get your TAR. Um, at the uh, under that folder. The one thing I highly recommend and very, very highly recommend is look at the release notes. Um, it's under the document section. So in order to get going here, we go to our controller, go to the command line in the controller, log in, this creates an SSH session. And once we uh, are in, our first thing that we need to do is configure terminal, get into the config, and we need to turn off the auto upgrade for the APs. So whenever we're upgrading our controller, we're not automatically upgrading the APs. So we turn that off first so that we uh, can manually upgrade them later. Second thing we need to do is we need to enable a TFTP server so that we can transfer the file or pull it from our computer to the controller. I'm using on a Mac just TFTP server. It's a free software. They ask you to donate. So I'm on Ethernet uh, port 47.177. So I kind of sped this up a little bit, but copy TFTP192.168.47.177, the destination of my file, and then the software name. And I want to put the full tar in there. And do not forget the period. I put a circle on there. Do not forget the period there. So this takes forever. The TFTP process takes about 10 minutes. And uh, you might be tempted to try and cancel something or wait. Don't do anything. Just wait. Uh, about 10 minutes later, TFTP comes back OK, and then it starts the extraction process on the controller. So this takes, uh, I didn't speed this one up too much, this takes about two or three minutes here. After that's done, you're going to come back to the, the hash here that we're, where you're starting from. Second thing that we need to do now that we have our TF, uh, TFTP done, the file is on the controller, we come back to maintenance, go to file management, go to SD versions. Now we have two versions here. Now we can start the process to actually upgrading the controller. Come back to the command line. Just type upgrade controller, the firmware version, and that's uh, 80SR1-2. Type yes. This takes about eight minutes for the controller to upgrade. Um, about, uh, well, it actually takes a little bit longer, but what happens is that at the eight minute portion, stopping the WLAN services starts, and this uh, starts the upgrade process by stopping all the WLAN services. And this is an image of what that looks like. After that's done, uh, we wait another five minutes. You can see that my ICMP to the, uh, to the controller has now stopped. And we're looking at that, just, just waiting for it to come back up as it's rebooting. It takes about three minutes. Once the controller's back up, um, I'm adding a little marker here because I ran into a problem on my video. I tried to refresh the screen and I get a forbidden. So uh, one thing that we're going to test with that, I'm just going to put the full IP address in, get forbidden again. So my first step for troubleshooting is I try to SSH to the device and see if I can log in just uh, on, on SSH instead of over port 443. and ask for the password so it looks like I can, and I sure can. So that means my browser's cached something from the previous controller. So I'm gonna open up an incognito window here, see if I can get in that way. And I sure can. So it asks for the username and password. So I just need to clear my browser, browser cache. So we have a couple things that we're looking at. Fortinet's got their logo on the system now. We can see right next to WLAN management, we're on 80SR1-2. Uh, we look at a critical alarm. If you remember, we do not have our APs on auto upgrade. And so we need to auto turn that back on as well as upgrade our uh, APs. 
to the same firmware as the uh, controller. It's pretty simple to do. Just get into an SSH window, go upgrade, AP, same, all. Click yes. And this will give you just a quick um, overview. This takes about six minutes or so for it to erase the flash, upload the new firmware, and then reboot and associate back with the uh, controller. Pretty easy process. If I had more access points there, I'd, I'm imagining that it would list every one of them there. So now that that's rebooted, we can come back to our controller and we're gonna refresh a couple times and it's gonna take a uh, second for it to um, hook back up and find the controller again, but it'll start broadcasting in a minute here. All in all, I have a graphic that says this takes about an hour. Um, this is a waiting game. You just have to trust that everything's working properly. It's a little bit of command line, um, but uh, it worked fairly well. So we can see that the uh, operational state of our AP is now enabled, and that's about it. Uh, but like I said, just make sure you wait, wait, wait. Don't close anything out. Just trust that it's working. You need to budget at least an hour for this process. And I hope you guys have good luck. Thanks a lot.